what's up tribe how you guys doing <clears throat> excuse me go ahead and hit that subscribe button i hope you like this video this is sisters season one episode 16 so look y'all we picked up where we left off last week with um andy walking up in the conference room and everybody there gary jasmine the, the other lawyer from the from the club the night before the partners her boss everybody's up in there and here's what i don't understand about andy why are you acting like you don't know what's going on? You walk up in there and the dude was like, hey, how you doing? Did you have fun last night at the event? What? Then they were like, sit down, Andy, we need to talk. About what? You know what? Girl, stop. Just stop it. Now, maybe you were trying to collect your thoughts. I don't know, but you know why you were there. You know why everybody was in that room. Stop playing. So then... Jasmine is just being nasty and rude, calling the woman all out her name. And one of the partners was like, no, nah, we don't need to do all that. No, I will call her what I want because she's f***ing my husband. See, you're doing too much. And Andy was like, well, look, I told you with our first at our first meeting that you needed to, to find another firm that I couldn't represent you. And she was like, but you didn't tell me you were my husband. And her, even her own lawyer kind of looked at her like she did. Like, she told you to find another firm. Because, I mean, even though Andy, you know, shouldn't have took the case or whatever. But it does at least show that she was like, look, we, mm -mm. Um, Because at first, Andy didn't know who she was. She didn't at first. But that's neither. That, all that, all that's water under the bridge, child. She was wrong. She shouldn't have took the case. Her boss forced her to do it. So then, she... Got Gary there looking crazy, you know. He looking like he want to be anywhere but there, and she's trying to get Gary to tell the partners, basically that he asked her to throw the case. It was, you know, it was one of them Tyler Perry long drawn out scenes. But ultimately, that's what he was trying to get her. To, that's what she was trying to get him to say. And Andy was like, "Wait a minute, hold up, no, 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 no." He asked me, but I told him no. So then it just becomes my word against your word kind of situation. And since you already looking shady, Andy, it really doesn't matter whether you said no or did you didn't say no. You should have never been representing the woman to begin with. So, of course, her boss is like, are you serious right now? Then the lawyer was like, look, all that don't even matter. We about to, you know, we can already sue this firm for $10 million. And then and here go Jasmine. And we want this bitch disbarred. And so, they end up leaving. Um, the You know, the partners were like, mm, you know, this your little protege. Handle it, talking to Andy's boss. And was like, you know, we ain't never been sued before. So, basically, Andy know her ass about to be out of a job. So, when everybody leaves the room, her um, boss was like, you didn't write me out. And she was like, no. He said, but you had, like, you were perfectly within your rights to write me out. And you didn't. And Andy was basically like, yeah, I mean, I didn't. What purpose would that solve? Like, at the end of the day, I took the case and I shouldn't have. Like, I, you know, it is what it is. So Andy ends up and she said, well, he was like, well, I'll make sure they, you know, they do right by you. <laughs> okay. Andy goes back in her office. Her secretary comes in there and is like, girl, what happened? And Andy was like, what you think happened? And Andy, why are you being so nasty to this woman? This woman is really trying to be nice to you. Andy was like, well, you know, I'm probably going to get fired. And I'm going to need you to pack my things up. She was like, okay, yeah, no problem. She said, but wherever you go, I want to go. I want to work for you. Wherever you go, I want to go. Andy was like, mm, well, you can go now. I said, why are you being so rude to this woman? She tried to be nice. She tried to warn you about what was going on. It ain't her fault that you were sleeping with the bed. Child, anyway. So, down to the hair salon. Karen can't go in the salon. Karen need to get some therapy. She got PTSD. I'm nobody's doctor, so I'm not diagnosed to her all i'm saying is she need to get some therapy i don't know if i'd be able to walk in that firm i mean firm lord i don't know if i'd be able to walk up in there either y'all i'm i'm gonna be I, you see somebody I, I don't know you know and and her she's sitting in her car and her receptionist comes out and she's like girl come on in here excuse me y'all she's like girl come on in here you've been sitting in your car for a half an hour she was like i can't do it she said, do I have any clients? And she was like, no, you don't have any clients right now. She said, but eventually you will. She said, well, you know, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. I can't go in there right now. She needs some therapy, child. She needs some therapy. So she calls Andy and says, look, I can't go in. You know, can I come to your house? Andy was like, girl, I was on my way home anyway. She was like, okay, I'll meet you there. 
So Andy's walking to her car. Who's at the car waiting for her is um the lawyer, right? Um, the lawyer that she met at the club. And here's the thing about him. At first, I think I was kind of liking him. But now he's coming off real sleazy to me. His affect is very... And she asked him, she said, did you know last night that you were going to be ambushing me this morning? He was like, yeah, she came to me yesterday. She was like, so, like, really, dude? And then he going to say, look, you know, I came to talk to you about your future. She was like, what future? He was like, you're a bulldog. No, first he said, no, first he said to her, you're too special or whatever. Because he didn't say beautiful. He said, you're too special or something like that to be anybody's side chick. And he was like, excuse me? He was like, I thought that was a compliment. She said it was a backhanded compliment. And it was. And you knew what you were saying. And I mean, at the end of the day, he's not wrong. But you're not the messenger. You know what I mean? Like, you're not the right messenger. He ain't wrong. But you ain't the right messenger. Andy don't know you like that. For you to be judging her and telling her what she should, you know, who she is and who she shouldn't be and all that. So then, um, he's like, look, I want to, you know, talk to you about your future. I want to offer you a job with my firm. And she was like, why would you do that? I'm about to be disbarred. And you're about to do it. He was like, look, Jasmine's angry. You know, she's hurt. She's angry. She wants some get back. But I think I can, you know, kind of work with her. Eddie was like, nah, I don't think nobody can work with her. Like, she's, yeah, she, 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 she focused. And he was like, look, I'm going to try to figure this out. But you, you know, you have a great reputation in these streets. Like, you're a bulldog. And he, she was like, so is that another compliment? He was like, I meant it to be. Look, let's go have a drink and let's talk about it. And Andy was like, oh. So, and here's the thing, the way he said it made me feel the same way Andy felt. I don't know how to describe it, y'all, but he said it real sleazy-like, and it made me feel like, oh, so you, I gotta go, because on one hand, I don't think he meant it that way, I think he just meant like, look, let's go somewhere and let's talk, but the way it came out was, <laughs> yeah, you go have a drink with me and we can talk about your future, like, that's how it, it so I don't know, y'all, I don't know about him, he, he, he coming off, he coming off crazy to me, I don't know. So, um, Andy was like, yeah, no, I'm good, you know, peace. And, and that was that. So down to the bank, Sabrina and, um, Maurice are talking. Maurice gives Sabrina money to replace the liquor she drank. He gave her about $80, so she must have had some good stuff he didn't tow up. And she took the money, too. And I said, good for you, Sabrina. So... He's still trying to like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And she was like, okay. He was like, we good? She was like, look, I forgive you, but right now you just have to give me some time. Like, you're going to have to really give me some time to work through this. So once again, he's telling her that she need to call old boy. And she was like, look, I'm not ready yet. You know, it is what it is. So then he goes, excuse me, y'all. Ooh, sorry, y'all. So then he's going to say, well, I'm going to call him for you. And she was like, no, that's part of the problem. You have been way too involved in this situation from the beginning. Let me handle it. And that's pretty much that. Y'all yeah, know I can't I can't dwell out this situation. So she ends up calling Danny, basically saying she was going to come and have lunch with Danny so she could talk to Danny. Now, dude from the club the night before, you know, I guess it was his party or whatever. He come through there. And, of course, Maurice does his normal try to flirt with him. And he was like, nah, I want her to wait on me. So, he goes over to Sabrina's um, line. And at first, you know, I was like, oh, okay, you know, he, you know, he flirting or whatever. But then he turned into, you know, asshole. And he was like, yeah, you know, um, I need to deposit this $800,000 check in my escrow account. You know, I'm buying a new house. And she was like, okay, thank you. He was like, so that, I mean, that don't get no reaction out of you? She was like, well, we'll get a reaction. I mean, I just gave you an $800,000 check. Like, that's a whole lot of money right there. That don't impress you? She said, I work at a bank. I deal with transactions all day long. Yeah, I mean, but ain't nobody coming in here like me giving you money like that. Sabrina was like, okay. He said, look. I'm closing on this house, you know. Uh, why don't you come through? Uh, it's got this beautiful bedroom. It'll just make your panties fall right off. Sabrina just kept looking at Maurice like, is this dude serious? So he was like, why don't you come through? And what about your friend from the other night? Um, you know, why don't you bring her with you? Sabrina was like, really? My friend? Me and my friend? Oh, okay. 
He was like, yeah, uh, let me give you your number. She was like, and your wife? <laughs> oh, you been looking me up. I mean, yeah, I'm married. She said, no, I didn't look you up. You just told me yourself. He was like, okay, okay. I'm married, but you know what? It's complicated. Why don't you come on through? He said, let me get your number. She was like, oh, okay. And I knew she was setting him up then. I didn't know what number she was giving him, but I knew she wasn't giving him her number. Honey, she didn't gave him Maurice's number, honey. And of course, because <laughs> Maurice was like, are you really about to go hang out with him? She was like, child, no. He said, I gave him that number so he would leave me alone to get away from me. So anyway, that was a cute little scene. So down to the uh, airport. Look, y'all, this has got to be... Whatever airline this is, I don't, this got to be, they worse than spirit. I don't never want to fly whatever airline this is that daddy worked for. She, at her station, uh, Zach come over to her and tell her, can you go in the bathroom and check on old girl? Because she went to go take a pregnancy test 30 minutes ago. And I know it don't take 30 minutes to pee. Danny walks away from her station. Don't nobody take over for her. Ain't nobody else standing there. She walks away and goes, um, and goes to the bathroom Oh, girl is in the bathroom, and no, she's not pregnant, child. And she tells, um, she's like, well, I'm embarrassed, you know, I don't know how to tell him I lied. She was like, just go out there and tell him you lied. I mean, of course, it was Danny being Danny, you know, she was clowning or whatever. But basically, she was like, go out there and tell that boy that you lied. She was like, you gonna tell all my business? Danny was like, probably, you know. But you still need to go clear this whole thing up. Like, why would you lie? Like... You had to know that once you, you know, wasn't no belly popping out, he was going to figure out you wasn't pregnant. Like, stop it. So she goes out there to talk to Zach. And she tells Zach, basically, you know, I'm in love with you. You're a catch. You know, I lied about being pregnant because you just don't know. You play yourself short. Zach was like, what? He was like, look, you knew what this was. Like, this was a booty call. That's all it was. And once again, y'all, y'all playing... Tyler, you play with my emotions because again, this conversation makes it seem like it's that they've been having sex regularly, that it was a booty call type thing, and then she developed feelings. It does not sound like they had a one night stand and that was it, but okay, whatever. It is what it is. So she, you know, he was like, So she was like, So do you, you don't love me? He was like, No. She was like, Well, damn, you ain't have to say it like that. He was like, You knew what it was, like. You knew I had a girl. You knew you knew what this was. I don't know why you're trying to turn it into something else. So then he was just like, so she was like, well, um, I mean, so that's it. Like we're not gonna we're not gonna see each other anymore. He was like, no. And Danny, you know, of course, Danny is, is all up in the mix, like looking at the chick, like, are you dumb? Like, what is wrong with you? But anyway, that was crazy. Like, whatever. So he was saying that he would love Karen and he was in love with his girlfriend, blah, blah, blah. So Danny was like, you know, I really, I love how you love Karen. You know what I mean? Like, basically, you know, you're going to need to fix it or whatever. So he's happy he ain't the baby daddy. He rocking through the airport yelling and telling everybody that he ain't the baby daddy. In the meantime, Rodeo Boy is texting Danny, and Danny is ignoring him because she don't know what to do when a man actually likes her, honey. She don't know how to respond when a man gives her the same energy that she gives him. But Sabrina shows up for them to go to lunch, and Sabrina tells Sabrina ends up taking her phone and texting him back, like, "Girl, why are you not texting this man?" Like he texting you, and so she texted him back and was basically like, "You know, sorry it took me so long. I've been busy at work, you know." And he's like, well, I want to see you. And she was like, when? You know, anyway, they're going to hook up again, child, whatever. Um, but ultimately, Danny just can't deal with the fact, you know, because that's what Sabrina said. She said, so when it's a guy that actually likes you instead of Jerome's hit it and quit it and disappear for three or four weeks, you know how to deal with that. But you don't know how to deal with it when a man really, you know, is loving up on you. And she was like, basically, she was like, yeah. Anyway, so... Karen and Andy. Andy f confesses to Karen that she got fired. And um, Karen is telling her, girl, you need to fight. Like, you know that, you you know, he's lying. You know, she on some get back. You need to go to the partners and tell your part and tell the partners that your boss made you take the ca made you take this case. And she was like, I can't do that. She was like, why not? Like, you, this wasn't, you didn't they made you do this. Like, why, why can't you? And she was like, cause if I was going to say something, I should have already said something. It was my fault. I should have stood my ground and I took the case. It is what it is. And she was like, you know, Gary, I was the one that told Gary to go back home. And you know, he basically 
you know, ratted on me and made his, it made the situation. She said he never said that I accept it, but he let it ha- kind of hang out there. Like, he let it linger that he asked me, but he never said definitively that I said no. You know what I mean? And she was like, so it is what it is. I just got to kind of, you know, lie in the bed that I made for myself, so to speak. So, I'm pretty much certain. Oh, that's the other thing. I'm sorry. Let's rewind. Let me go back to Danny and, um... Danny and Sabrina for a second. So the other thing that came up in the conversation, Danny told Sabrina what I've been saying for the last three episodes. Girl, cut your losses and move on. She was like, do you believe that this man is not gay? Well, I mean, I don't think he is. She said, well, bisexual. Well, maybe. She said, see, that's what I'm talking about. If you don't definitively believe that this man ain't gay, leave it alone. Let it go and Sabrina was like well that's easier said than done okay yeah it is but like this is ridiculous and this has been dragging on for way too long and I agree Danny y'all ain't known each other this long for it to be this serious like I'm sorry it just ain't that deep anyway moving on Karen is back at home her house is still a wreck um um Pastor Boy, I, you know, Pastor Boy shows up with a whole cleaning crew to clean up that one damn room. You would think that they fought for 30 minutes and they tore up that whole apartment the way he acted. You could have bought one little person to come through there to fix what they had to fix, honey. They picked up that damn broken ass TV and put it back and was polishing it off like that, like that TV was ever going to cut on again. If y'all don't take that TV to the damn dumpster, then it took one. I'm looking at it right now. One, two, three, four. Five people. He bought five people. And then she told me something. That's okay. I needed some new furniture anyway. They didn't break no furniture. They broke one little table. If y'all don't stop acting like anyway. So he basically, you know, was. And I mean, he basically using it as a distraction. He, he's, he blames himself. He in a bad spot, and he's using all this as a distraction rather than dealing with the real problem. So he asked her if she had something to drink. And she was like, yeah, I got some juice. You know, I got some water. He was like, "Mm mm-mm, you have something a little stronger. She was like, he was like, you got some cognac? She was like, yeah. She said, pastors can drink? He was like, this one can. And, baby, he poured himself a drink. I mean, he poured half the damn bottle. She said, that's a big drink. He was like, "Mm mm-hmm. So then he gonna pour her a drink. I mean, he probably gave her as much as he gave himself. I said, what you about to drink? Like, you clearly are just trying to get drunk. Like, that wasn't no... You... If he had drank all of that, he wasn't going nowhere. Like, that was a clearly... uh, Anyway. But what we find out, though, is he's a recovering alcoholic. And so as soon as Karen realizes that, she takes the liquor from him and ends up pouring it out. And she was like, "Mm -mm, not on my watch. Like, you are sober. We're going to find another way to help you deal with the situation. But you ain't about to, you're not about to mess up your sobriety on my watch, sir. It will not be over here. And he, you know, confesses to her that, you know, he once was a wild child. And he was doing, he even said he was alluded to the fact that he did drugs as well. Um... And then we find out that those kids that he was so worried about, and I, I shouldn't say it like that. Anyway, he said that the his in-laws are going to take the kids. And she was like, wait a minute. Because she was saying, no, you have kids that you have to take care of. And he was like, well, my in-laws are going to take the kids and, you know, they want custody and I'm not going to fight it. And she was like, wait a minute, those are your kids. Like, you can't just give up custody. And he was like, well, that's a whole nother story. And she was like, wait a minute, so those aren't your kids? You know, so, and that's kind of where that conversation ended. But both of them need therapy. Both of them need to go get some counseling. They got some PTSD. They they got a lot going on, and both of them need some counseling, child. I mean, seriously, like real talk. Now, back down to um, Andy's apartment. Andy's, wa- um, I was going to say Andy's waitress. Andy's um, secretary shows up. I guess supposedly with the stuff she done packed up, she got a whole mail cart. And I'm thinking to myself, somebody's inside of that. Because it ain't no way in hell she had that much stuff in her office. First of all, you knew you was getting fired. You should have took some stuff with you, okay? Second of all, you wasn't taking the furniture. You need a whole mail cart. Honey, guess who up under the covers? Gary. Look, 
I don't know why Gary's there and I don't know why the secretary helped him. And I'm sure we'll find that out tomorrow because, honey, that's where the episode ended. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in them comments. Peace.